Hi, I'm Morris Pichon. I'm the co-publisher of the newsletter Pacoima Today. We have with us today Mr. Jose Castile. He is a candidate for the 7th Council District. We would like to ask him some questions concerning how he feel about issues that are important to the citizens of the 7th Council District. Welcome. To be sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. One of the things a lot of the uh, citizens in Pacoima are interested in is street vending. We understand, the community understands, that the city council is in the process of making street vending legal under the pretense that they're going to issue permits and, and other issues and they're going to regulate it. How do you feel about that? Well, city council has already passed the ordinance to decriminalize it. So that's already gone through the council. They do want to regulate it by issuing permits. Um, I believe that there's some some type of regulation has to be in place. How how they do it, dealing with the health department and doing you know all the other permits that we talked about, for example, the food trucks um, that are currently on the street. Uh, some kind of system needs to be put in. It does affect, like we talked about the last time, the brick and mortar operations where you have restaurants that are selling food. Um, and not, now having to compete with the people that are on the streets. So it does present a dilemma. My suggestion, or my recommendation would have been to go by community by community. Certain communities don't want street vending. Uh, and therefore, I guess they put some regulations on how many street vendors you can have per corner, how far they can be from the school, and what hours they can operate, and those type of things. So to answer your question, I, I don't know um, what impact it's going to have, but I would suspect that it's going to have some kind of an impact on the existing businesses that are already, um, you know, struggling. Yeah, as it is. So regulation is important because you don't want people getting sick, and you don't want people, um, you know, eating tainted food. Okay, another uh, issue with the citizens of Pacoima is they. The homeowners are wondering why it takes so long to get the trash removed from from the streets of, of, of the city. Many people are concerned because when they call city services, they get reason but they can't do it because they got they got budget problems or the city employees tell them it can't be done because they don't have the manpower. A lot of citizens think I pay taxes. For city services, I want to receive them city services. What do you intend to do to increase the frequency of city services or improve the condition of, of the city of Los Angeles? Because it's not just in the Seven Council District. It's throughout the city. Everywhere I go, I see it. I've seen that too as well. Um, but I, as a real estate broker, I sell real estate throughout Southern California and throughout the city. If you go out to the west side, they don't have near the amount of bulk items on the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's because of the services that they're using, because I know that if you go to Lowe's and you buy a refrigerator, they'll take your old refrigerator. You don't have to put it on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I go to the swap meet to buy a refrigerator, I'm going to put my old one on the street. I don't right? have nobody to take it. <clears throat> I think what we need to do is develop. Uh, and again, we have our, our community here in Pacoima. A lot of them are, are technologically challenged don't understand how the 311 app works. The 311 app is, is, is using technology where I use it, I point it at, at a bulky item, it sends an email to the appropriate department, they send you an email telling you when they're going to pick it up. I get an email if I'm in office that tells me that um, that, that item um, has been scheduled for pickup. So it's the use of technology is number one. Number two is the frequency. Is My idea is you know how they pick up the... The, um, the black cans in the front of the street yes. is to schedule the bulky items at the same time. Is You have one truck that goes through, picks up the black cans, and then you have another truck that goes through and picks up the bulky items at the same time. And then tell people like they do in San Francisco, you can't put your trash cans and you can't put your bulky items out there unless you have a 24-hour notice before it goes out. If you go to San Francisco, you don't see that, that issue. Well, there's a rule here because uh I've called Bulk Trash Pickup and they said, we'll schedule you for Friday. When is your normal trash pickup day? It's Friday. So my green can, black can, 
and blue can, they all get picked up on on on, on, on trash pickup day. I might as well say, uh, as long as I've lived here for 30 years, and I have yet to complain about the Department of Sanitation that pick up the cans. Right. It's only the, the bulk trash pickup. Yeah. They don't show up. And right. so you put your stuff out on Thursday, they, don't they say pick it up on Friday, nobody shows up. Well, again, the 311 app is one way, and the other is to have a another vendor that follows those trucks that picks up the bulky items at the same time that they're picking up your trash can. Is that currently what they're doing? Uh, that's, I don't know if that's what they're doing, but, but I'm thinking outside the box. I'm trying yeah. to come up with a solution on how to solve it. Yeah. Or the oh. other source would be to go outsource it. Outsource it to a third-party vendor that will charge less uh, to do those pickups. I have a gentleman that I know. I just pick up the phone. And he'll, he'll pick up mattresses all day long yeah. because they, they take the mattresses and then they recycle them. So anything dealing with that, I have people that will pick them up. I've noticed that the uh, graffiti uh, group, they actually take care of graffiti in minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're a contract. And their contract tells them that if they don't deliver those services, their contract won't get renewed. But I'm finding that effective. So oh, yeah, that'll work. Maybe that's good but, that, but we have to look at the graffiti um, contract as well because if you're paying more money <coughs> for services that could be done less expensive and save money to deal with issues of bulk items. Um, this item that you're talking about is very prevalent uh, for the apartments where people are moving in and out of apartments and people don't want to take their stuff so the manager t throws them out in the street. Is that legal just to throw out in the street? Mm, well they, they call 311 for, for pickup. So it's legal? It is but we need to look at that issue. In this particular community, the first of the last of, of yes of last month and the first of the next month, in front of every apartment building, there's mm -hmm. furniture stacked. Yeah, sometimes two or three households of furniture. Yeah. So and so that should be a, that's an issue that that a lot, I've heard that from a lot of people and I've seen it myself. Yeah. Um, another question they ask people have been asking with all these candidates for the uh, seven council district seat. How does it help the community to have 20 candidates? 19 of them are going to fail. What can we do with the, with the ones that do not make it to the council seat? Is it a possibility that something like an advocate group utilizing the, the people who have uh, signed up to run for the seat? Could we create an advocate group? to take a look after this community? Well, that would be, that would be, I call it wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, if you look at prior elections, you've had four or five people run. And uh, when we had the incumbent and the incumbent had a lot of money, um, four or five people would, would jump into the race and run. Now that we have 20 people run, we had 40 people interested. Out of the 40, 20 people qualified for the ballot, myself included. Um, I don't think, to be honest with you, that and I, I could be wrong, that the other candidates would want to remain engaged and involved after the election. I am going to stay engaged and involved either way. I'm already, I'm the only candidate that, that came out and worked with the Mission Hills Neighborhood Council. Had been dormant for seven to eight months. And none of the candidates came out to uh, work with the community to resurrect it. So I'm already on the board. So I'm already a budget advocate for the community of Mission Hills, which doesn't mean that I'm not going to do anything for Pacoima or Silmar or these others. I'm going to continue to get involved. I was the one that mentioned the budget advocacy program to our board at the Pacoima Neighborhood Council to get involved so that Pacoima starts receiving their fair share of taxes. So, but to get in back to your original question, I just don't see that these candidates are going to want to get involved. So I could be wrong, but I'd stop. If you if you were in this seat, would you kind of motivate or advocate that the various neighborhood councils actually get together and, and say they say once a month, once every two months, and they work together to take and inform the the seven district councils councilmen to actually step up and and and, 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 and explain to everybody what exactly needs to be done or listen to the citizens and what they want done. Well, here's what I'm, I'm proposing is, is that the city council member, the office, share office space with the neighborhood council so that if a constituent or a homeowner comes in and needs services and the neighborhood council can't help them or resolve them, they can walk across the hall 
and deal with somebody in the neighborhood in the city council office. Staff member. Yeah, staff member. Yeah. And then if they can't resolve it, be able to pick up a phone and do a face-to-face -face conversation with me downtown. And then I can deal with the department downtown that deals with the issue that the constituents have problems with. Yeah. So that would be one solution. The other solution, and that's using technology. And up until now, I have seen no candidates out there using technology how I use technology. So the other issue is developing a, a um, neighborhood council advisory council that's made up of the vice president, the president, the treasurer that would meet with the city council quarterly so they could get feedback on where we are with the money that we're getting from the city, where are we with the issues dealing with um, items that are on the docket for the city council so that I can get feedback from the neighborhood council so they can take it back to the neighborhood that they belong to and get feedback from the constituents. How do you feel about uh, giving the neighborhood councils a, a bigger part in, in interacting with the councilmen? Because some some city councils, I'm not city councils, but neighborhood councils are more effective than others. What could this councilman for say seven, uh, the CB7, what could he institute to make the Coima neighborhood council more effective? Here's what we could do, and I mentioned this to the neighborhood council, and I've, and I've been involved with the neighborhood council here for years, is that we need to bring in more leadership. We need to bring in more people into the board um, and, and diversify the board. We need to also provide additional training. The neighborhood council needs to um, step it up. Uh, and by that I mean is they need to understand that meetings are there to conduct business and to do the business of the people. The city council office needs to provide resources and um, whatever else is necessary in order for the neighborhood council to be successful. My proposition is that all neighborhood councils will be held at the Bacoima uh, City Hall, which will be open six to seven days a week. If I can get volunteers to help me keep the city hall open longer hours and on the weekends, that city hall will become round zero for the uh, development of Bacoima. I want to thank you for having this meeting with us and share with the, share with the community how you feel about some of the issues they've been asking questions of. And so, um, your final statement. What I like the voters to understand is who I really am. I am a person that has a passion and a vision for District Seven, including Pacoima. Um, I'm a highly educated Latino. I'm bilingual. I understand the culture, I understand the issues, um, I have solutions for issues dealing with homelessness, gang violence, reducing crime. I'm a real estate broker, residential and commercial, so I know how to bring and create jobs. I want to work with the youth uh, and have programs for the youth, get involved with the schools that are not performing, and start bringing up the level of education for our families. I think that I have a vision that at the end of the, year, at the, end of the deal, uh, it'll you know, it'll resonate with a lot of people. I want to have a summit within the first 100 days so that everybody that's involved in District 7 gives me their feedback as to what the priorities are. A one-year plan, a three-year plan, and a five-year plan. And then execute. Thank you, Thank Jose. You. Thank you.